Welcome to DaVinci Resolve 17 in 10 minutes. This video is going to teach you everything you need to know in order to edit a video in DaVinci Resolve 17 from start to finish, from importing your media, cutting it together, adding titles and transitions, and then exporting into a final video file for you to share wherever you want to. Now, just a quick disclaimer, this video is going to sort of not really go over all the more advanced editing features. This is more dedicated towards beginners that want to jump in to a free software and start editing videos for themselves, for YouTube, or whatever it needs to be for. So if you wanna jump ahead to anything, check the timestamps down in the description below. That'll sort of block out this video in terms of chapters and sort of skipping ahead and all that sort of stuff. But I guess the first step is for you to make sure you've got DaVinci Resolve 17 downloaded. So the link will be in the top line of the description, so go ahead and download it. And then we're going to jump in. So obviously once you've installed it, whether it's on Windows or Mac, we're going to open it up. Perfect, and when DaVinci Resolve 17 opens up for the first time, you're gonna be introduced to your project screen. And basically this is where you're gonna have access to all the projects you may have worked on in the past. Uh, obviously you're opening for the first time, you're gonna have nothing there. So you're gonna to want to just either double click on untitled project, which is gonna open DaVinci Resolve, or you can just go new project, in which case it's going to ask you to name one. So we're just gonna double click on untitled project, and it's gonna open up DaVinci Resolve for us. And here it is. So obviously it's gonna be pretty intimidating for you guys. So we're gonna break down the layout really quickly and then pretty much cut down to the bits you need to use in order to have a video edited really easily. Obviously there's a lot of tabs and features of DaVinci Resolve 17. It is a fully featured editor, but if you just wanna to cut together quick footage, there's a lot here that you probably don't need. So taking a look at our interface, the biggest thing I want you to look at is this bottom bar here, and this is our navigation bar. So each of these different tabs is basically a different workspace for different parts of editing. So the media tab, and if we click on here, you will notice everything changes. This is for sorting through your footage and audio and all that sort of organizational stuff. That's what this tab is designed for. You do not need to use this tab at all. You can get by without it. The next tab is the cut tab. This tab is designed for stringing footage together as, I guess, efficiently as possible, especially if you've got a lot of footage. We're not gonna look at this today. I, you do not need it at all either. The next tab is the edit tab. This is the one we will be using because this is where you're gonna edit all your footage together. This is the main tab you will be using. So we'll get back to that one in a little bit. The fusion tab, and this one always takes a little bit longer to open. This is for visual effects, graphics, title building, all that sort of stuff. Not something we're gonna be looking at in this video, but there are plenty of other tutorials on my channel. If you wanna check it out, I'll leave them linked up above just there. So that's the Fusion tab. We're not gonna be looking at that. The Color tab. We are not going to be looking at this tab at all, but if you want to jump into color grading, I also have tutorials on my channel, as well as there's plenty of others out there for you to look at. But this is for you to, I guess, color grade your footage, make it look a certain way. So you can go from something like this to this. But we're not gonna look at it because we're pretty much trying to get you guys up and running as fast as possible. So color page, awesome. That's what that one's there for. Pretty self-explanatory as well. Next one is the Fairlight page. This is for advanced sound mixing. Even in my professional work, I don't use this one that often because it is designed more for professional audio engineers and that's just not what I'm doing. So we're not gonna look at this one either. It's not necessary for what we're doing. The last tab is the Deliver tab. We will be using this one, so we're gonna be looking at the Edit tab and the Deliver tab. The Deliver tab is for exporting everything you've just worked on, everything you've edited, and then having it output into a single file that you can open up, play, share, upload, whatever you need to do. Moving further to the right, we're gonna look at this bottom thing, corner here, we have the home button and we have a settings option. And so the home is gonna take us back to that first screen that we were at before. So if you're working on multiple projects, this is how you would switch between them. And then the settings tab here, this is settings for the project you are working in right now. So if you wanted to change, say the timeline resolution and anything like that, that's where this would be accessible. So yeah, by default, I think DaVinci Resolve 17 defaults to 1080p, so full HD. But if you wanted to go to Ultra HD or 8K, you could do that as well. Change the timeline frame rate and everything like that. On the left-hand side here, you have more advanced features for your project setting. But generally, if you want to edit timeline settings and your main stuff, it's this little top part here. We're not gonna mess with any of that today.
So let's move over to the edit tab and have a quick breakdown of how this works. So basically DaVinci Resolve is sort of split up into kind of like quadrants, okay? So we have our top section up here and these are the different menus that we can open, all right? And then on the left-hand side, we generally have access to our media and that is consistent across all the different tabs in DaVinci Resolve. And then on the right-hand side, we have all our settings and options to edit different things. And again, consistent across the whole of DaVinci Resolve 17. Now, a few buttons I just wanna point out specifically is this little arrow button here. Basically what that will do is drop this little box quadrant here and drop it all the way down so it takes up about a third of your screen. And then likewise on the opposite side, you can do the same thing. I tend to have them up like so, so I have a larger timeline area, which is what this section down the bottom is. This is where you're gonna be editing your footage, moving around your footage and everything like that. And then this middle bit here is where you're gonna be viewing your footage. So pretty self-explanatory with all of that there. Generally with what we're gonna be looking at, we're gonna be using the media pool, which is where we're gonna access all our footage and audio. We're gonna look at our effects tab for titles and transitions. And then we're not gonna look at the others, okay? On the right hand side, we're mainly gonna be using the inspector, which is where we're going to be using things like making font larger and smaller, you know, zooming in on footage, that kind of thing is what would be accessible here under the inspector. Everything else you can pretty much leave if you want to edit a video and get, you just sort of wanna get it out of the way. So what we're gonna do before we start is save this project so that we can get back to it. So you're just gonna go file, save project, and it's gonna ask you to name it. So we're just gonna call it my first video. Boom, and then it will update up here. Once that's saved, perfect. So now that's all out of the way and you should get into a good habit of saving your project frequently. Uh, majority of the shortcuts that you would expect to work do work. So, you know, control S or command S will save your project. So you just hit that and it will save. So let's bring some footage in to DaVinci Resolve. To do that, we're going to right click in the media pool. Now, if it's not open, if you're under the effects library here, just make sure you click on media pool. I'm gonna go right click and import media. Now you'll notice that all the menus in DaVinci Resolve 17 will always show the shortcut there. So if you want to start using shortcuts, you can. So we're gonna go import media and it's going to give us our little file browser so we can navigate to the footage. This, so I'm just gonna to navigate to where I've got my footage and I'm just going to drag and select it all and I'm going to bring it in. Now, this box comes up quite a lot, change project frame rate. Don't fret, this basically is saying that the videos and audio that you're importing is slightly different to the settings that you have for your project. So if you have 4K footage and you're importing into a 1080p project, this would come up and vice versa. I'm just gonna go don't change because I'm happy with the project, but if you know that the footage you're importing is filmed a certain way and you do wanna change to it, you'd go change. So we're just gonna go don't change. And straight away you can see our media populates up the top. Now we do have a few controls up here in terms of you know making it bigger or larger, list view, icon view, information view, all that lovely, lovely stuff. That's what that's all there for. Pretty self-explanatory with all this sort of stuff. Now, if you wanna browse through the footage, you can just hover over it and it will show you the footage and all that sort of stuff, pretty cool. Or you can double click on it and it's gonna open it up into the source viewer here. And so this isn't in your project yet. This is just so you can view it on a larger screen and go through it. So let's bring it down onto the timeline and start editing this footage. We can do that one of two ways. We can right click timeline and go create new timeline. And that is going to allow us to name the timeline. We can make the timeline match the project settings or if we uncheck that, we can change the format here to whatever we want. Or you can just click and drag a piece of footage and drag it down here into our little area down here. And that'll automatically create a timeline based off of our project settings, okay? So it's just gonna create our 1920 by 1080p project. So when looking at footage, we can browse through here and you can see we have our, this is basically the timeline for the footage, this gray line here. So we can scrub through by clicking and dragging. We can hit the play, we can stop, play backwards, that sort of thing. Now when bringing footage down onto the timeline, sometimes you don't wanna bring the whole clip. To do that, you basically sit, set what is called in and out points for your footage. The hotkeys for that is I and O, or you can use these little arrows here and it will say mark in, 
mark out. So if we didn't want the footage to start here, we wanted the footage say, let's start with the window open. We can hit the letter I, and you'll notice now that we have this dot here, and then we can move forward a little bit, hit the letter O, and now if we do click and drag that footage from here, or if we click and drag it from up top here, we're only gonna get that little section that we just marked. So that's important to know. So again, if we were to go to a different piece of footage, we could scrub through. Let's use the buttons this time, mark in, mark out. And we can click and drag from the video here or click and drag from here. Doesn't matter where you click and drag from, once you've set your in and out points, that's all the footage that will get brought in. Now you will notice that when hovering over the video, you will get these two options here. This is allows you to bring in either video only, so you notice it just brings in the video, or, uh, you might guess, audio only. So you can only, so a couple of different options there. But what we're gonna do is let's go through all our footage, just hit our in and out points, and let's just drag all the footage down onto the timeline. Now you notice some of it has audio, some of it doesn't, not a big deal. We're just going to click and drag them all in. So now we have our timeline pressing spacebar to play it through. So navigating the timeline is pretty simple. We can just click and drag up this top section here to scrub through, perfect. Um, spacebar to play, you can click to select and just drag it around and move your footage. Pretty simple stuff. So to start working together on the footage, the key hotkeys I want you to remember is A, which is our just standard cursor tool, and B. B is the blade tool, and so you'll notice when I hover over footage, we have this razor blade. Clicking will create a cut, and then if you go to the A key, it allows you to select things, and you could move that out and hit delete to remove it. And that is really the most common way to edit footage, is to use the B, so the blade, to cut your footage up and remove, and then Basically, you'd go through and you'd go, I don't want this bit here, I don't want that but there. And then with your A, you're gonna go through, click and delete, click and delete. To zoom in on the timeline, it's Command plus or Command minus. Alternatively, you can just use this here. These gaps will remain there, so it will go black. To get rid of them, it's super simple. You can click on the gap and hit delete and it will delete those gaps there. So the part, best part here is with your own footage, play around with cutting it together. So using your B key to, you know, blade bits together and delete it. And then, you know, click and drag your footage to move it. Use that to move your footage together. So what I'm gonna do now is bring some audio down and we're just gonna quickly cut, put this track here. And I'm just going to blade it at the end there and delete the rest. So we have a little bit of a audio track to this footage. Now, what I have noticed is this audio track is quite loud. So to lower the volume, we can go to the inspector up here and lower it here. And you'll notice that the waveform will go up and down. Now, let's add a quick title to this. To add titles, you're gonna to go to the effects library. You're gonna go titles. And this is where we have all the inbuilt titles in DaVinci Resolve. You can literally just click and drag them here. And you'll notice it adds a basic title. To edit the title, click on it. Over on the right-hand side, this is where you can edit it. You can just backspace. And here you can change the font, all that sort of stuff, change the size of the font, all that sort of stuff. And that is how you're gonna edit the titles. I have a video playing around with all the new titles in DaVinci Resolve 17 up above if you want to check that out. Now to do transitions, same sort of thing. You click on video transitions at the top here and literally it's a click and drag business. So we're just going to click and drag and you'll notice it will hover over and show you where it's gonna place the transition. And you just go through and play, super simple. So play around with that, add some titles, add some transitions, and get your video where it is with those little tips. Now once you've cut that video together, you've added your title, you've added your transitions, we're going to want to export this out. To do that, we're gonna head over to our Deliver tab, click on that, and you can see that we have our video down the bottom, very similar layout, you can see here we've got our options up here to export, and we have this here is basically all of our cuts. So every time we've made a cut, it's showing it here. We can zoom in on the timeline so we can see pretty much looks identical to what we were just working on because it is identical. And then up the top here, we have our export settings. Now, if you want to speed through the export, I generally recommend just going with the YouTube preset. It tends to be really good for compression and just sort of having a small video that you can share, browse to wherever you want to export it to. You know, this is pretty self-explanatory stuff. So we're gonna go render, save it. And you can pretty much leave it at default settings. 
Perfect, we're gonna go add to render queue. So it's gonna queue this up and it won't start rendering it until you hit render all. So we're gonna hit that button and it's gonna do its thing. It's gonna take however long it needs to take based off of your computer. Here it is, all done. So there you go guys, that's DaVinci Resolve 17 in 10 minutes, more or less. Uh, hopefully this video will get you off the ground, up and running with editing video inside DaVinci Resolve 17. If you have any questions, make sure you hit me up in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you guys. Also check out my channel for multiple videos I have done on DaVinci Resolve. You'll find a lot of them are gonna translate from 16 to 17. So check them out if you wanna do some more advanced things. And yeah, here's to a good 2021.